Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is our second podcast. So the first thing we're going to do is start talking about the Super Bowl. Uh, it was Tampa Bay versus Kansas City. Uh, I can't believe, I thought it was going to be a much closer game. But uh, it turns out to be 9-31, to so that's pretty crazy. Yeah, the Bucks D line took care of the game completely, making Patrick Mahomes run 497 yards in the backfield. That was insane. And... I can't believe we didn't hear anything about Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey the entire game. That was pretty crazy. They never even managed to get in the end zone, which is even more crazy. Yeah, they really they really covered Tyreek Hill. Uh, Patrick Mahomes' wide receivers dropped it a ton, even making insane throws. Yeah, their O-line was not having it today. Um. Well, people are complaining about the refs. I don't think the refs did a bad job at all, to be, to be fair. Yeah, um, the refs were doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, there was, uh, the first woman ref. She did pretty good. All right. Yeah. She did all right. Um. There, there was one questionable call. Yeah, but that happens for just about any ref, so that's all right. Um, I can't believe, uh, they didn't score any touchdowns. Uh, Kansas City didn't score any touchdowns. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, and especially with the Patrick Mahomes two interceptions, I would say both of them weren't his fault at all. Yeah, and when Kansas City Chiefs, they were under pressure and they started running the ball, they did really good, started picking up a bunch of yards, but they were running out of time, so they started throwing it, and they just could not get any yards. But every time they ran the ball, they got five or six yards every single run, but they just started running the ball too late in the game. Yeah, well, uh, I would say... Tom Brady's performance was pretty good for a four, a forty-five year old. Um, ha- Ella having three hundred forty total yards and thirty-one points on the board. Yeah, I can't believe he already has seven Super Bowl wins, and he's coming back again for another season. He's he's a pretty old man, but I would say the Chiefs' penalties really affected them during the game. They had a hundred and twenty yards. Of penalties during the game compared to the Buccaneers 39 yeah so if they didn't get that many penalties it would have been a completely different game and if they started running the ball way sooner it would have been probably a way different game now this third down efficiency by both teams were not good at all Buccaneers went four four out of 12 on third down and Chiefs went th- three for 13 yeah and then fourth down efficiency the Chiefs went one for three and the Buccaneers went 0 for 1. The amount of first downs was pretty pretty close, I would say. But honestly, the turnovers affected the game, and the Chiefs offensive line did as well. Yeah, but there were no fumbles, so that was pretty great. Good. Um, uh, the Tampa Bay's defense was just amazing that game. Yup, and it, it affected their whole way to the Super Bowl. Um, just a lot of interceptions, especially on Drew Brees. Um... Yards per play wasn't really much different either. I really just think it was the turnovers, the sacks, that really just lost the Chiefs the game. Yeah, and uh, there are only one sack for Tom Brady and three sacks for Patrick Mahomes, which, as you can tell, the offensive line for uh, Kansas City was a lot weaker. But Patrick Mahomes did a really good, good job of not getting sacked and throwing the ball right before he got sacked and holding it for as long as he could. Honestly, I thought this would be a much closer game, but it's it's just one game can be really great and one game can, can be really bad. Yeah, but Patrick Mahomes had a bunch of really good sidearm passes, and his wide receivers kept dropping the ball, which is crazy. Yeah, Tom Brady with the 201-yard game, three tutties, and 21 for 29. I would say Leonard Fournette had a pretty good game as well. Have having 89 yards, averaging 5.6, and having 16 carries and a touchdown. Yeah, Tom Brady looked pretty good. He didn't get that many running yards, but he had a bunch of good passes. And uh, Rob Gronkowski did really good. Yep, having two touchdowns, six receptions, 67 yards. I would say that is a pretty good performance from the veteran, especially Antonio Brown, which surprisingly came this season, having one touchdown in the Super Bowl, only 22 yards. Yeah, Mike Mike Evans did pretty good. He didn't get a single touchdown though, but he got a couple yards and he did good for his team. So, that's good. 
Um, in the defense, the defense played amazing. Devin White with an interception. Antoine Winfield with an interception as well. Obviously, the iconic peace sign to Tyree Kill. Alrighty, we have a new guest here, Connor. He's going to help us talk about some baseball. So they just re-signed Marcel Ozuno, and he is going to hit a bunch of dingers this year. Yeah, so he's on the Braves now. And there's a couple of new baseball rules, like if a team has a doubleheader in one day, they're, they might do seven innings, and if a game goes into overtime, they might start off with a guy on second base. Um, also, they're adding DHs to the NL, so that means there will be no more pitchers hitting, which will be pretty nice because I hate seeing the pitchers hit bunts and getting out. There will be no restrictions on the pi position of players pitching, so that means they can do whatever they want. They don't have to follow all the, like, mechanics and stuff, so that's a pretty good one. They qualified for a um, new two-way designation. That rule will not be in place during the 2020 season. So now we're talking about some college lacrosse. The fifth, the first day of the season, Duke with the win over Denver. I thought Denver was going to beat Duke. But then Utah had not so impressive win over Bellarmine. I thought Utah was going to destroy them a little more. Mercer, I saw that game coming. Uh, Virginia over Townsend. Virginia won. All right, Sunday, February 7th, North Carolina destroyed Denver 24-13. to No one saw that coming by such a big lead. Oh, that was insane. So... The thing I've noticed about Denver is their goalies aren't doing that well right now. Um, their save percentage is 34-25-0 and zero for the season right now. That's not so impressive. Let's go talk about the upcoming games. Okay, so on Saturday we have um, a doubleheader, UMass versus Army and Virginia versus Army. Um, we also have Delaware versus Villanova. Maraquit versus Cleveland State. I'm pretty sure Maraquit will win that with some Georgia natives. Um, we have Ellison. And then Bryant versus Providence. That'll be a good game, guys. We have the Macaulay School goalie versus the Macaulay middle fielder. He, that's going to be a good game. And then Duke Mercer, Duke's going to just absolutely destroy Mercer. And then North Carolina Jacksonville is the other big game. And that's just going to go downhill for Jacksonville. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about the PLL MLL merge. So the good news is it will be all under the PLL, which I think is really good. I, I love the MLL, but I think the PLL is a better league here. Yeah, that was a very good call to do, just to merge them together so there's no more beef in between each each uh, of the leagues. But the good thing is we will have MLL teams in the future joining the PLL, just not right now because it's too hard to merge all the teams at once. So right now we have the Cannons joining. Boston Cannons will now be named the Cannons LC. So, yeah, that's good. Um, some thoughts from some people. Um, now we just gotta see. Um, if the NLL will support both the leagues merging, or I don't know. But the NLL has canceled their season. Just so you guys are clear, they are focusing on the 2022 season. The sad thing is, the salary cap will be lowered in the PLL because we do not have. They do not have all the money to keep paying for the MLL players. Um, so the Barrage, new team this year, and all the other teams will probably go to the PLL. Just not this year. All right, guys, make sure to go to Walmart and get your mini stick. Uh, it's very good for... Taking on vacations, you can get one of them for twenty three ninety nine, and the other, uh, if you want a two pack, 
You can get it for $39.97. They have them in Walmart, and each one of them comes with a ball. It's really fun to go uh, on vacations with if you don't want to take a whole stick to, like, the beach or to New York or wherever you're going to go on a vacation. Um, they're really high-quality sticks. Uh, we're probably going to go get some in the future. And... Make sure to stay tuned because we'll probably post a video of us testing them. And also, guys, if you guys really get used to these sticks over vacation, you can just look at how they're strung. They're strung by pros, and you can string them that exact way. So go get them. We're supporting the PLL here. Rabel has done a great job funding this league. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Make sure to leave a like and a comment down below if you want another podcast. Uh, these are really fun to make. Uh, make sure to share with your friends, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Oh. Testing, testing.